as long as I, um, you know, I can pay my rent, pay the few bills that I have, you know, I'm comfortable. I don't have to be like a millionaire or, or anything. You know, I just, I mean, my art is my riches. You know, so that's all I really need, really, when it comes down to it. I've been doing this about well, 10, 15 years now. Just straight painting, surviving as a painter, having work continuously. You know, it's. Uh, even, I mean, I have the fame, but I don't have the, uh, I guess, the income that comes with fame in most industries. If you're a, a famous actor, you know, you get movie roles. If you're a musician or an act, or a, even an investment banker, if, if you're well known and you're good at what you do, you get compensated. But in the art field, it's a little more difficult because it's really about you know, how, how, what your rap is or, or how, you're, how you promote yourself. Joe Bravo loves his, um, his culture. He is uh, always painting it. Uh, I see through his uh, tortilla paintings, he's talking about um, the roots of, of his, of his uh, Mexican culture, his, his, me his Mexican identity. Um, you know, some people call his work kitsch because, or kitschy, because he paints on tortillas. Um, but he's actually using popular, popular art. Joe is telling the world what, what he eats and what he's proud of, and that is his tortillas. So um, he's painting on, on that. It's, he's just using that um, along with um, canvas and paper he does in his other work. So this has already been painted, but I'm just going with a few touch-ups, and then I, I re-varnished it again, too, by mixing all the colors or incorporating them into the overall look. It gives it more of a feeling of, of wholeness, not so much like separate little parts. It's like a, I'm on a voyage of discovery with a, with a painting. Any set process, it's more like filling my way through, you know, and that's, Part of the creative process, it's not like it's a mathematical equation where it can only come have one one way, you know, one answer to it. But you know, art has many answers. There's a term in Spanish that I like to use, and it's called todo se vale, meaning everything has value. So whatever I do, you know, if I accidentally go like that, you know, it's not a mistake. You know, I can wipe it or. It has value. Just like in art, when you view art, you just don't look at the positive, positive space, you look at the negative space. Like this is negative space, but it has value as much as the positive space because this serves to accent the hat. I mean, this is one tortilla, but I came in to make it look like, you know, it's an actual hat that he's wearing. The Avenue 50 studio has been around since 2000. I really believe that um, art uh, needs to make a statement versus um, like minimalist art. And, and it makes, that makes a certain kind of statement that I don't like. Um, I, th I wanted to show work that had content. And I like narrative, I like story. He would come to the gallery to some of the openings and he would ask me um, to, be in, to be in shows with me with us here. Um, at that time, I did not put him in exhibits because I had the same feeling that a lot of people had was that his tortilla works were, were kitschy, you know? And um, so I didn't want to go down that road. I wanted, you know, work that was more political. And then I started rethinking the whole question of, um, of the tortilla as, as a surface to work with. Uh, I've done a lot of Mayan uh, profile images or paintings on tortillas and I thought for Day of the Dead I'd do something a little bit different which is put a skull with a Mayan headdress and Day of the Dead is about giving homage to uh, you know loved ones that have passed away. Uh, I wanted just to include the whole Mayan culture uh, and give homage to them and the skull just worked perfectly, you know, with the headdress. Uh, and uh, this is a male figure, and I have a, a female opposing figures looking at him. 
The interesting thing about a skull is that it is, it is a symbol of death, yet it's a smiling symbol of death. And maybe that's why Mexicans may, you know, have used that smile and used the calavera in so many ways, maybe because when they look at that face, it's smiling at them. It's called Bailadora number three. I've only done three in this type of, uh, what would you call it, style. Uh, I'm usually, I use very muted, very sedate colors. I don't, you know, like to get real bright, you know, and that's how usually Mexican or Chicano art, they see it as bright, colorful. And so I wanted to do that for, you know, something different. We're, we're all artists in one form or another. Uh, we all have the creative ability to make something out of nothing. You know, whether you're an artist, whether you're a musician, we're creative. We have to be creative in what we do because art is really about problem solving, you know, or overcoming obstacles. I got some uh, negative feedback because they thought I was. Uh, I guess belittling the Virgen of Guadalupe because I paint Frida, but I really made her like a patron of the artists and, uh, you know, put brushes so she's our, our lady of the artists. It was in 1976, I met Joe and picked some kids off the street and trying to show us a different way of, you know, of life and this is one of the things that, that, I, that I really look forward to doing. Because I always, I always, I always had a little experience with drawing, but my drawing, it wasn't big; it was small. So this is something that I thought I could do, and, and got a group of people, as well as myself, and started helping Joe do it. That's the only surviving original mural that I, I did. It's well, the Highland Park, but I didn't design that, and that was I was hired to paint on it. So that's not really my concept, but this one was totally my concept. Going into a mural that you're painting, you have to be conscious that it's not going to last forever. I think an artist needs uh, an audience, same as an actor or a poet or a musician. You know, they they feed off the audience reaction, and I do the same with my art. If somebody can relate to what I'm doing and they love it, then you know I feel really you know satisfied that I've done my job. What I need, first of all, is to survive doing my art, you know, so I guess I need to sell some work or, or do a mural or something. But a lot of it is self-promotion. It's funny because even though I work in promoting, I mean, my whole career was promoting. I promote other products, but I'm not very good at promoting myself or... Because it's more of a personal thing. It almost feels like you're boasting. I mean, I'm not, but... But you have to, you have to go, you know, put the word out. And I mean, I do things that I need to do, but as far as a, being a good salesman, I, I'm a terrible salesperson. And I wish I had, well, the stability to just paint what I want, but I can't have to focus on things that I know will sell. If you do like a great political piece, it, that's hard to sell, you know, something that, I mean, some artists, you know, can. The American soldiers didn't look, uh, or didn't know what the Iraqi leadership looked like, so the the uh, American, I guess, the generals gave them playing cards. Like Saddam Hussein was the ace of spades. Uh, I forget the other person's name, but anyway, there were picture cards so the GI soldiers could recognize the Iraqi uh, leadership. So I thought, well, they don't have a Joker card, so I thought I'd do. Bush is a joker. Just to show how, how precarious our country was when Bush, you know, was president. The economy took a dive and so then I went back to square one as far as, you know, selling art. And it's still a little difficult to sell art, which is why I kind of do other things like mural painting as well and, and teach. Also teach art. As far as who I am, my life, my character, my status in the community, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an artist, so that's who I am and that's what God made me for, to put me in this planet for and, and to share it with, you know, the world.